having a beautiful home you can call your own is a wonderful feeling. The process some people find daunting if they don't know or they don't have someone to hold their hands. And that's why we've put together this video today to show you the easy steps to go through, making sure that you get your home in a very, very seamless way. There are other videos that will be coming up. I hope you enjoy them. I hope you learn from them. Stay tuned. Hiya, are you looking to buy a house? Are you looking to get yourself a mortgage, whether small, whether big, and you don't know where to start from and you're thinking, uh, what do I do first? What are the wrong steps to avoid? And all of those questions that normally pop in people's hearts, then this video today is for you, as well as all the videos that I've done in the past that I will be putting their links in the description box and I will be putting their cards up in the screen for you to click on. They're very, very important to watch those videos Videos because they will point you in the right direction as to things to do first and things to avoid and you know steps that would you know make every of these processes easy and very seamless for right. you. Getting straight into it, this video today is just a continuation or a step up or an update of a video or the videos that I did last year 2020 um, about how to buy a house, about mortgage processes and stuff, pros and cons of the um, up to buy equity loan uh, provided by the government and just so you know at this point it's very very important that I mentioned that the government's equity loan that's the help to buy will be coming to an end come 2023 but what they're going to do of course is put something in place to replace what's on ground at the moment so I mean for those of you wondering what I'm talking about make sure you check the other videos that I've done then it will make better sense to you so um jumping into it today on this video we're going to be talking about 10 good steps to take to make your house purchase seamless in this year 2021 and moving forward whatever time you want to buy a house it's never too late but what i try to say to people is that buy a house and wait do not wait to buy a house if you get what i mean there is no perfect time do not wait for when your salary is bigger your husband's salary is bigger or your family circumstances you know change how about you buy something that can accommodate your family circumstance at that point and then when you're larger when you're bigger when you're earning better you can then sell that off or rent it off and then buy something bigger if you get what I mean so the whole idea of why I like to push videos like this is just to encourage people to get on the property ladder as quickly as possible I say to people stop paying other people's mortgages for them when whilst renting a house I mean you can't help it at some point especially if you're an immigrant or if um you i don't know we don't have to necessarily be an immigrant those that are not immigrants of course have a, have a face in their lives where they rent first before they then buy but you will find that some people would rather live in their parents house and for those born and bred here as an example until they can save enough to buy their own house which i think is a better way i mean to go about things you could support your parents with their mortgage so you can put together your own money to buy yours i mean that's just a way to make sure that you don't pay for another man's mortgage for them and a way to get on the property ladder and do things you know in a quicker and more efficient way i'm five minutes into this video and i haven't even introduced myself my name is Olubukola I'm a nurse I'm a vlogger um, an entrepreneur and I like to do lifestyle on this channel I do nursing I do random bits and bobs on this channel if this is what interests you please please and please subscribe to my channel it's entirely free to do so please like my videos I mean it, it's good for my um, YouTube algorithm and um, it has nothing to do with anything it's just so you know the videos can pop up more for people to watch and also please and please you can share any of my videos you're free to do so and um, press the notification button if you don't mind and that way you can get a notification each time I release a video and in case you're wondering how come she's got so much passion for property how come she does property videos she's just a nurse I mean I read a lot about property I've got loads and loads and loads of interest in property I've got a um, mortgage advisor friends who keep saying i see you going the property way even though you're a nurse i mean it just shows how much interest that i've put into it and as an overseas nurse living in the uk i mean when we came in many years ago we didn't get that much hand holding as much as people here coming in now they get
get information here and there when we came in there weren't that much or many information to go around so we pretty much struggled our way through everything we did so i mean if you think you've gotten it now how about you support those coming behind you and that way they don't have to go through such stress that you went through which is what i think i like about those of us around now we're really supporting our fellow um overseas nurses straight into it a very very common question that get asked is how quickly can i get into a property from the moment i show interest i mean it depends on how ready your house is like the house you're showing interest in is and how your your own circumstances are as well as about the time you show the interest but it could take an average of 15 weeks but do not get me wrong it could be less it could be more so i mean if you've just come into the uk so you're just a month you're just there 12 months you're just 18 months you your process might not be as seamless or as quick as someone who's been in the uk three years four years and showing interest in property especially if that person who has been in the uk before you has you know done the necessary things that need to do in while they've been in the uk like getting themselves on the um, electoral roll your credit report your credit score is being built you make sure that you um get yourself a credit card or two but do not get too many and that way you do not look as though you're struggling and then make sure that um you pay you make payments via direct debits as an example so you know little little things like that that i've listed in my previous videos so i'd rather refer you to those videos it saves us going back in time when you can just watch that video so that being said 15 weeks on the average so how many months do we have in 15 weeks about four months uh, approximately so it could be up to four months it could be more than four months like i said it depends entirely on what your circumstances are or how long you've been in the uk for right the very first step to know is you need to save a deposit so your question at this point would be how much deposit do i know that i will save when i don't know the kind of house that i will go for so if you don't mind waiting till the end of this video i will share with you the ways to buy a property in the uk as at now and how you know you can go about saving for the money so speaking of deposits so for example if you're looking at houses you can say if depending on your family size you can say um i want a three-bedroom house detached semi-detached we have mid terrace we have end terrace we have detached house we have bungalows there are different kind of houses so if you can just go like on google and have like a rough search of the kind of house that you want so say a three-bedroom house you find it say from your search on right move on zoopla on um, random putting three-bedroom house in Bowsedon as an example or three bedroom house in Southampton as an example on Google Google will give you like an estimated price of what that gives you an idea of what the prices are like then that gives you an idea of um what savings you need to put in place before you then say oh yeah I'm ready Get what i mean so saving your deposit is the first thing believe it or not do not look for houses first because there are so many things that need to come into place before that point where you rigorously begin to search for houses that way you don't get disappointed you don't get too emotionally attached to a house then you realize your circumstance cannot you know afford such house and then you feel so down and la la so that being said you need to make sure that you save for your deposit first now speaking of how to save for your deposit uh, i will put it a put out a video at some point about how i save for my deposit and how i know people normally save for their deposit to buy a house i mean there are several ways but i'll just simplify them for you and that way you make sure that you're making the right steps in the right direction and um, that being said that's the first step except you have a guarantor there are some people that do not save for deposit because they have a guarantor they've been here in the uk for so many years they were probably born in the uk and um, they've got their parents who's got a house as well their parents can stand as a guarantor for them because their parents houses or what they own their properties are um, big enough or large enough to stand as a deposit for their children so such kind of children would definitely uh, not require a deposit and unlike you who's come from overseas you're probably two months old a year old so 18 months old blah blah months old so that's um how to the go about second that one. step is to get a mortgage advisor i mean you need an advice as much as you think you've read online you've watched videos you need advice so you need to get expert advice from people who are really really into this that's the core thing they do right if you go on google tonight after you've watched this video just press on google mortgage advisors near me 
it will bring out all the list of mortgage advisors in your environment and try to book an appointment to see one of them on monday the 25th am i right with that timing try to even if you're a week old in the uk try to book an appointment with a mortgage advisor on monday if you're rough on monday try to do that what am i saying i mean it will look as though you don't have anything yet you don't or maybe you've been here not long enough uh you don't even know what you're doing yet that is the more reason why you should seek expert advice they will then go with a notepad go with a pen go with someone who would you know pick one thing or two that you think you might miss and that way you can both jot points down you can both ask questions based on what they say to you and that way um you can make sure that you're ready ready and you're being put in the right direction a mortgage advisor as an example they tell you how much you can borrow they support you as to information you know to build in your credit report and maybe you've probably heard some people say oh general rule of thumb uh, if you want to know how much house you can buy, just multiply uh, your salary per annum. Say if you receive £26,000 an annum or £30,000 an annum, just uh, multiply it by four or four and a half. It gives an, an idea of what kind of house you can buy. It means whatever your answer is, is um, the... Uh, amount of house you can buy in the uk uh, it doesn't totally work that way i mean it's a general rule of thumb that that point is a uh, uh, correct if you get what i mean but it doesn't apply all through and through because there are other factors that will determine apart from for apart from that multiplication you've done like if you've got kids how many kids you've got what responsibilities you've got on them and um, like how much i mean they just want to know your income expenditure a balance like every every lender you know that wants to give you a mortgage mortgage just means they want to borrow your money to buy that house that wants to put a, a mortgage in for you would want to know if you can afford to pay them back they do not say they will not borrow you but they want to know your circumstance they want to know if you will be able to pay them back so that's the whole idea of mortgage and uh, mortgage advice affordability checks also other factors like have you got outstanding debt um I, I, what's your visa status i mean someone who is on a visa a three-year visa as an example say tier two visa you know would say you've only just started on that visa so you've got two and a half years on that visa two years on that visa there are some high street banks that will gladly lend you because you've got so many years left on that current visa whilst some will tell you if um you're not on ilr we're so sorry we can't borrow you yet so you have to get your indefinite leave to remain and um, while some will tell you if you're on a three-year visa back to the three-year visa example and then you're two and a half years into that visa like you spent two and a half years and then you've got just 30 uh, sorry six months left on that visa they'll tell you they're so sorry they can't lend you while some would say okay we will lend you but their interest rate will be inc um, ridiculously high so the moment you get your ilr your um interest rates you know of course comes down but what i say to people is do not wait for any perfect circumstance even if you get the house whilst your um on visa and then somebody gets the same house but they are on ilr and then they get a lower interest rate or whatever their circumstances which looks as though it's better than yours i mean the whole point is you're out of a rented apartment that's the whole point i want you to leave this video with if you do not take anything out of this video take the fact that you're leaving a rented apartment into your own house and then by the time you remortgage well when you check the other videos i've done i explained remortgaging in those videos so when you remortgage do you understand your circumstances would have you know pulled better by then and that way your borrowing chance would be better at, at that point and you know you don't have to necessarily wait for the perfect time that's something i've learned from my asian friends they do not wait i, I had I, I have a, a um, an asian colleague who said the worst mistake she made was she was waiting till her children were five or our oldest children was five she didn't know what she was thinking so when the oldest children was five uh um the house she's been hiring in that area she's been hiring the house for had so much appreciated because of course it waits for no man so if she had bought the house when the oldest child was two to get what i mean and then maybe the younger one was one and a half or whatever or uh, pardon my my calculation there six months or whatever you will agree with me that by the time that older older child is now five years old the house would have appreciated 
more because it's not three years she's been in that house in that location and then she will sell it off at a more price and then she there is a gain she will have on that house that she will then transfer into that bigger house you know that she wants that perfection that she wants when a child is five i don't know if you get the old logic so that is what i try to push for i do not want this video to be too long i'm so much of a talker i'm so much looking at the time it was still on the second point which talks, talks about affordability assessment and that is what the mortgage advisor does for you they have a database they put your information in they tell your story you can not afford um uh, more than a house worth so so by now as such your circumstance now uh, but you can work towards it by doing this this and this they help you to avoid problems and when you have an idea of what your affordability is then you then have an idea of what the right deposit you should have indeed is if you get what i mean i mean they would ask questions like what do you do what do you earn per month have you got any extra job do you do bank do you do agency do you pick up extra on the side and um, blah blah and they will do an affordability chair for you i mean on the rough and then you can run with that whilst you you know put other things they've asked you to put in place in place so if at the point that you you know you've been to the mortgage advisor you've been here a while 12 months 18 months more than four years five years whatever time you've been here for and then they now tell you that oh we think you your circumstance with your circumstance you can borrow then at that point they can apply for a mortgage in principle for you it's just to say that the lender is making an agreement in principle that it will borrow you but it does not guarantee mortgage success you get what i mean so that way when you go to assess buildings say you walk into a development whether new whether old and then you tell them oh i'm interested in this property it's a hundred and forty thousand pounds um it's this it's that and then you can amongst other things say to the estate agent or to the staff at the, the customer care service or whatever that um i've got a mortgage in principle you will look more serious because remember that the whole essence of putting a market or putting a business forward or putting a, a sales forward is to get someone to buy it as quickly as possible so uh well at a good rate of course so uh you know anything to put yourself forward and make yourself seem like the best buyer for that property is what you should do and that's what why the second step is important and that way you know you can just tell them and that way they take you more seriously your offer is taken into consideration they come back to you stand a higher chance that someone who hasn't got a mortgage in principle so, so of course the fourth step from the third uh, from the third step you would have gathered that the fourth step is to start searching for a house so it is when you first search for a house you then make an offer if it's a non-build i mean many new builds you not cannot necessarily negotiate them i mean you can negotiate stuff like uh we're so sorry we're not providing tough for the um uh, front front garden or for the back garden you can negotiate and say oh uh, can i have that please or they tell you they're not providing flooring for the house and you can say to them uh, can i have that as an addition please what can i do to make you give me that as an addition blah blah so if you get what i mean so those are things you can make and can you can negotiate and some be some new build or some new developments do um like an offer on one or two buildings in a week so they say out of the month offer of the month and things like that you can get offer on but if it's a non build non new build these are houses that people have lived in before you maybe for six months for a year for 10 years whatever you can negotiate with the seller via the estate agent to say can i pay so 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 instead they'll tell you yes they'll tell you no and then you do your uh, planning or your negotiation from so there the fifth step is to get a solicitor so when you get a solicitor it could be someone your mortgage advisor recommended for you well well at this point some people say oh do not use any any solicitor or anyone another person introduces to you say the estate agent introduces to you or the new build and um, customer service advisor introduces to you because sometimes they're partial they're impartial uh, there are a bit of a debate around that but whether they're from your estate agent or whoever that has recommended them to you make sure that whoever you're using as your solicitor is based on recommendation and that way you can check what they've done for other people and you can have an idea of what they will do for you and that way you're not shocked at the middle if you get what i mean so we'll know your solicitor you begin to put paperwork in place you ask how much they want to take so apart from the more the, your deposits there are other prices or other costs to put into consideration like um your solicitor fee 
so at least they, they get they take at least a thousand pounds at least it could be up to one thousand to one thousand four depending on your area depending on the value of your house depending on your circumstance you know they put some things into consideration to charge you so just put that at the back of your mind somewhere as a cost to incur whilst you know getting all of this sorted and also your mortgage advisor if they're not an independent mortgage advisor you will get you will get to pay them at least 450 pounds 400 pounds ish you will get to pay them but there are some of them that gets paid by the bank that they find for you so if you know what i mean so those kind of those kind of ones um you don't have to pay them i mean we did not pay our own uh, mortgage advisor as an example there are the independent ones right the seventh step you're you're gradually getting there so the seventh step i mean all of these things that i'm talking about may happen in weeks weeks and weeks so i mean this is me just summarizing them to give you a rough idea of what to expect so you will submit your mortgage application it is at this point they'll ask you for your pay slip your bank statement how many children do you have you ask you i mean all of the questions that your mortgage advisor already asked you when he was doing your um accessibility your uh, affordability assessments they would ask you as well the mortgage advisor would ask you again so that they can then put your application through so remember i said that even though you've got a mortgage in principle it doesn't guarantee you um your mortgage success so they've still got to put through your uh, application and then get a final yes if you know what i mean and then you know that face of going through the property at that point your solicitor will get evaluator so the evaluator will do a bank i mean sometimes evaluator comes from the bank Mom, they no. do evaluation or sometimes they come from the solicitor they do evaluation they of um the property to down. see that the value they um the, the seller that the builder or the um, old owner of the house is placing on it is the correct value that it should be on at that point the evaluator would value the house and all of these things they will take back to the bank to say okay the house is indeed worth the amount you're putting on it remember they are paying on your behalf so when i get to the point where you know i talk about ways to buy a house you will understand what i mean so after you put your deposit down which your deposit may be said nine thousand pounds seven thousand pounds ten thousand pounds what happens to the rest of the money if the house if the total house cost or value is 140 pounds and all you've put down is seven thousand pounds it means somebody has put down the rest of it so and it is the bank that puts down pretty much 75 percent of the total house cost so it means that i mean i'm putting that lot of money down i want to make sure that i'm not going to lose at the end of the day so that's the whole essence of doing evaluation to make sure that what they've said the house is worth is what it's indeed worth and that way if i was to sell the house i will get a good value from for it i mean the bank where to sell the house you know what i mean god forbid they take the house they repossess the house or whatever so it's just to make sure that it's not overpriced that's all essence of valuation and uh, getting a report back from valuation so make sure this video is not too long and that way you're not too bored well i suppose you're getting value for your time though i will then move on to the next point quickly of course just to mention quickly is that the seven stage seven or step seven that uh whilst after they've submitted your application uh, assess your circumstances check your credit reports which is different from your credit score so i will talk about credit re report or credit score as a youtube video itself i mean if you've got anything you'd like me to cover as a video itself please 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 free up feel free to um send me a message in the i'll leave my gmail account or just drop it in the description box that i want a video on so so and so and that way we can make sure that everything is covered for you so your credit report is just a complete assessment of you you're in the electoral poll you haven't missed any payments you do direct debit and you do it well while your credit report is the uh, while your credit score sorry is just the score you find so i mean you can get registered with experian credit score and um, the required number of them crediva and co but the ones banks normally use is the experian or you register with check my file so when you register with check my file i suppose the first 28 days or 30 days is free after which you begin to make payments so it's it, it check my file as a combination of three banks uh, sorry three credit reports companies um 
Experian um, I'll try to list them on the screen now as I remember so let me just go on with this video and then it's very very comprehensive down 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 it tells you so much about your credit report so that's what the credit report is which is different from just the score that you see you know what I mean so that's the difference but if you want more information about credit score how to check them and how to build them just let me know I will put a uh, video up for it I will uh, wait for uh, your message or your request on that so that being said i'll then move on quickly so to say that once your application goes through you then get a mortgage and offer so that's the very interesting part everybody's happy hey the bank said yes and they're happy with all of the criteria and they will they are willing to lend me that money you know what i mean so you get a mortgage offer so that's at that point you're buzzing everyone's buzzing okay, step eight then is when you then do an insurance cover some banks and some mortgage advisors would so Solely, solely insist that you have an insurance in place they will introduce you to a few ones they have or they ask you to go through one anyone you want as well so you get um say life insurance health risk insurance um income protection cover just to make sure i mean the whole essence is god forbid god forbid i mean as overseas people from uh, outside of this uh, uk we talk about oh god forbid it's what happened to us i cover myself in the blood of god and so god forbid say a chronic illness hits or god forbid there is a sudden death or there is a sudden change in circumstance that you went you know thinking about god 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 forbid i mean so the all insurance is to make sure that the bank i mean it may sound selfish but this is them just covering their own part to make sure they don't lose for all the 75 percent um deposit they will put that put down if you're using the help to buy equity loan scheme you know what i mean so um they make sure that they can recover their money and they don't lose that imagine if everybody didn't have an insurance and everybody had problems god forbid it means they will lose so so much money so it's all to make sure that they do not lose at the end of the day so um they would then pull money from life insurance your, your life insurance company your income protection uh, cover from this from that and then they get their money back so at that point they will insist that you please get someone uh, get signed up with all of these companies whatever company of your choice or school google click on insure and um, income protection cover life insurance critical illness cover the case maybe so um they'll just ask you to please provide ev evidence that you're registered with these companies or you've signed up with them so not not all of them do that mind um ours went really keen or they went firm on that so we did our um insurance covers when we were ready for them but while some will tell you please we need need documents to show for it so that's how that where part works and that's step eight explain so step nine is when you then make sure that all of your money whether you're using more money box life is life um lifetime isa whatever way you're using osusu esusu you're using contribution whatever way you've used to you know put your money together you make sure that the money gets through to the um builder that's your own deposit gets through to the builder safely and oftentimes it goes through the solicitor so that's when you give them instructions to pay this person to get money out of your money box to do this to do that to call for money and um, they do your title of deed for you if it's a non build non uh, non new build like an old build do your um change of title deed because someone was on the deed before they change the title to put your own name on uh, if it's a new one they just do like a new title a uh, title of deed form for you to fill the paperwork i mean this process is filled with paperwork you will be stunned at the number of papers you will fill out uh, when you get to that bridge, when you get to every bridge, you, you will cross it. Just all this mentality that I've done it, people have done it. You want to do yours, you can't be any different. You might need support, you might need guidance, of course. We all need help at some point. And the whole beauty of life is uh, that it's fine when, when you need help and when to ask for it and getting people to help you indeed. So do not be very uh, rigid on yourself. Like, I've got to figure it all out by myself. If you can't figure it all out, there is no reason why I won't call for help if I need help. So the last but not the least is when you then exchange contracts. All the paperwork's been placed, is in, is been put in place. Money has been given to people. I mean, like your five percent has been given to the um, what's it called? To the uh, builder. That's the order of the house if it's a non built house or the builder if it's a new built house so five percent your own five percent or whatever 
eight percent they want you to drop depending on your circumstance i mean when we say five to cents it could be more so let me explain what i mean at this junction especially for those that haven't watched my previous video, video before or have absolutely no idea about what i'm talking about i mean i've got to appreciate that you probably haven't learned much about this yet so we've got to appreciate that and do not and try to carry ourselves uh, along as much as possible so when you want to buy a house and you're using a help to buy the help to buy equity scheme you need at least five percent your circumstance may warrant that you deposit more than five percent so do not quote us so it could be more than five percent so um and your your the government puts down 20 percent for you you know what i mean so that's um five plus 20 that's i mean you don't have to necessarily get up to the whole 20 percent if you have plenty of money that you want to put down the government doesn't have to necessarily put down the old 20 but you can get up to 20 percent that's what it means so people do uh, some people do not know this so and then the remaining 75 if what we are sticking to is five on your side 20 percent from the government then um the remaining 75 gets put down by the bank Barclays bank satanda halifax whatever bank they get to put the rest down so that's what i mean when i keep saying five percent five percent five percent so and um, that's where we are so you exchange contracts you feel all the paperwork everything's going successfully you're happy you're buzzing and the final point is when you then collect your keys so at that point you call it the completion phase you collect your keys you're happy um they show you around the house they ask you questions you ask them questions you're buzzing you're taking pictures you're taking photos you're telling the whole world you've got a house um, and that's it really so um speaking of the bonus point speaking of the bonus point and of course the bonus tip is just to mention that apart from the help to buy equity loan say you're living in a very high cost area you want to continue to live there but then you can't afford the five percent of the total house value that you keep seeing in that area what you can then do is go through the shared ownership scheme so i mean you have to be over 18 you have to your own household income has to be eighty thousand pounds or lesser and um, there are other factors i mean like you can't you have to make sure that you cannot afford to buy via the f to buy scheme before then opting for that option and some other you know options that you need to um put in place the eighty thousand household um income that i mentioned is ninety thousand pounds if you live in london area as an example and some other factors i mean i will do a video for that on its own and i'll create like a uh, profile for home and home information for those that want to buy a home rent a home I will be doing more videos on that and my next video god willing is pitfalls or mistakes to avoid as first time buyers i hope you've enjoyed this video i hope you've gotten value for your time if you have please feel free to share this video like this video and uh, leave us a comment subscribe to my channel press the notification button till i see you again and uh, thank you very much god bless bye